Liberty TV, voice for all, mission for all. Democracy in Practice Interactive, giving the people their constitutional right and liberty to have their voices in politics and democracy and good governance in Nigeria. <laughs> Good evening all out there and you're welcome to this program, Democracy in Practice. My name is Nekhil Luke. On this program today, we're going to be looking at the release of the second tranche of the Pari uh, London refund, uh, loan refund. Of course, we're looking at what can be done with these monies now we are out. The second tranche, of course, not the last, but of course, even when we know that the federal government has given a mandate that said 5% of this money is given to the state governor should be used for paying, upsetting uh, salaries of workers that have been piling for some years, months, or what have you. So what should we expect? How should we get our state government, governors, to make a proper judicious use of these monies? Do not forget that these are the first time this money was released to them, and of course the first one, um, we cannot account for it, but now the second one is here. On this program today, we're going to set an agenda for the state governors, and of course, not just the state governors, the state assemblies. What role are they playing at this point in time? What we do to ensure that these governors are on their toes to ensure that for every project that is in your ward is being carried along now that this money is here. Of course, you know it's not in the budget, but now you know that this money is here. Let's get them accountable and do the needful with this money. That's what we're going to talk about on this program today. I'm not alone as usual. Rashid is here. Rashid, good evening to you. Evening, Mega. Okay. I'm fine, thank you. And you? You look great. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rashid. Okay, let's have our update and we'll talk more on that. Okay, good evening, viewers and listeners. And here is the news update. The All Progressives Congress, APC, has dragged the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, before a federal high court is sitting in Lagos, challenging the commission's planned recall of Senator Dino Melai, the senator representing Kogi West Senatorial District in the National Assembly without affording him fair airing. The plaintiffs are praying the court to determine whether, upon a proper interpretation of the provisions of section 65.2b, 68.1g, and 69 of the 1999 constitution as amended, the first plaintiff sponsored member, Senator Melai, to the Senate is not entitled to a fair hearing before the process of his recall as contemplated by the provisions of the aforesaid section 69 of the 1999 constitution is initiated or commenced. The Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has ordered a temporary forfeiture of an estate in Banana Island area of Lagos reportedly owned by former Minister of Petroleum Daizani Alison Madweke. The court also ordered the forfeiture of $37.5 million alleged to have been fraudulently siphoned by the former minister. And lastly, the 74th National Executive Committee of the People's Democratic Party has approved the August 12th for the party's non-elected special national convention bill to hold in Abuja. The NEC also mandated the Senator Hamid Makarfi led National Caretaker Committee of the party to immediately set standing disciplinary and reconciliation committees. Briefing journalists at the end of the NEC meeting, the party's national publicity secretary, Prince Dio Adeyeye, argued that there was no adequate time for the National Caretaker Committee to organize an elective convention. He explained that while the tenure of the committee was to elapse on the August 6, 16, 2017, the time was not enough to meet the constitutional requirement, which is 21 working days, for holding an elective convention. And that is the news update. Back to you, Mega. Thank you for that update. Um, from what you took, it seems as if the, the PDP is trying to put itself in order. But um, we'll not delve into the PDP matters, uh, because um, let's see how they go. Now that the court has granted, um, said, given the Makavi faction uh, victory, let's see what the PDP can put and how they'll be able to stand as a formidable opposition party. Like you always say, we need that to have our democracy working. But let's go to the first item you mentioned there. The APC is suing INEC 
for carrying out the process of the recall of Dino Malaye for not giving him fair hearing? I don't know. Which APC? The state branch or the national? Yeah, but from, from, <laughs> but of course. Well, whichever APC. Yeah. I think the recall is a people's process, not a party's process. Uh, anybody can initiate a recall as long as you have enough people to sign the, the petition that will be submitted to INEC. Mm. INEC so far has only elected to do verification of those who signed the petition. And uh, if uh, the court's injunction has not been uh, 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 brought upon them to stop the process, they will have gone ahead for that. I don't see any. I didn't read anywhere in the constitution where the party comes in at any point. Yeah, because uh, and it isn't the first time we're hearing the APC. At the point was the APC in Kogi State suing uh, for the recall of Dino Malayan. Now we have this APC. But I know this one is coming from Lagos State. But again, we begin to wonder what what is the stick of the party here kicking against Dino's recall. I was thinking, uh, or people would think, oh, this shouldn't be a party affair, it should be the people it's, deciding it's, it's if... Not a, it's not a party affair so, so far. Even the party itself always goes to the people to solicit for votes. Yeah. And if the people decide, by whatever means, that they want to recall the senator, uh, why should the party step in and say, uh, but I hope they are not just testing the waters, because I believe the politicians, a typical politician will try to plug that kind of recall hole where the people themselves can decide that they no longer want someone they have elected. And if the judiciary should play along with this, it will be a sad day for our democracy. Well, that's much you can take. Let's see how that's, that goes, because of course we're saying this is the first time there's a move to recall uh, somebody, a member representing a constituency. Let's see the, the kind of pace, the kind of history this will make. Let's see if Dino goes, and of course, let's see how far th this will go. But a lot of people have said, let all factions, let all parties allow this thing play out. Let's see how, how strong our democracy can stand as regards to a recall. Well, there is a fear that the process can be manipulated, but so far I haven't seen anywhere where that manipulation or call. Well, let's see how that goes anyway. But that's not what we can take on this update today. I said on Friday, of course, you know, we do a lot of um, calls, taking. So keep all your points. We'll talk about all this come Friday. We'll take a quick break to bring in our guests. When they come in, we're looking at the release of second tranche of the Paris uh, London um, loan refund. That's an agenda for the state government and begin to monitor to ensure that these monies are being put to use. Go nowhere. We'll, we'll be right back. Democracy in Practice Interactive, giving the people their constitutional right and liberty to have their voices in politics and democracy and good governance in Nigeria. <laughs> my TV on to a place where the fun never stops with an emerging force of news in current affairs a place where all the voices are heard Liberty TV channel Kaduna on the following platforms Star Times Decoder, Go TV Decoder, All HD Free to Air Decoders, NBC Free TV Digital Terrestrial Setup Box, Worldwide Streaming on www.LibertyTVRadio.com. Liberty TV, Voice for All, Vision for All. For vision, all. For vision, all. For vision, vision, vision. Liberty. Oh, liberty, oh, liberty, oh, liberty. Hey, 
I am Danny Sucre and there's an essence to staying glued to your TV because Liberty TV offers much more than you have ever seen. Are you looking for the latest updates on news, entertainment, education, information, enlightenment, business and lots more? Just name it because Liberty TV got it. Liberty TV is strategically broadcasting from Kaduna State to a global audience founded on the tenets of free speech, human and civil rights. You can catch us live on Star Times Decoder Channel 180 or Strong HD, better still, Multi TV. For online views and information, feel free to check out the website. It's www.libertytvradio.com. It's more fun in Liberty. Liberty, this is Liberty. Liberty TV, voice for all, vision for all. Democracy in Practice Interactive, giving the people their constitutional right and liberty to have their voices in politics and democracy and good governance in Nigeria. <laughs> Welcome back from that break. If you're just joining us, we are on the second part of this program. And on that break, that we're looking at the second release of the second tranche of the Pari London uh, refund. And we're of this program, we are setting an agenda for our state governments, our state governments, even state assemblies, on how to make judicious use of these monies. Now, the federal government has released details of the second tranche of Pari club refund to states, totaling. 243.7 billion. The refund is in respect of over deductions on Pari Club, London Club loans, and multilateral debts between 1995 and 2002. The, um, the federal government said these payments, which totaled uh, billions naira, were made to the, to the city states and the federal capital territory upon the approval of the president on uh, May 4, 2017. In partial settlements of long standing claims by state governments relating to over deductions from the Federation Account Allocation Committee um, for external debt service arising between the AM mentioned earlier. These debt deductions were in respect of the club, um, Pari Club refund loan, and of course, some states have claimed that they have been overcharged, as the federal government has said. Now, Nigeria has also reached uh, the final agreement for debt relief with this Pari Club in October. Uh, 20, 2005. That's the much we can take on this update so that I'll allow our guests to do all the telling and all the explanations we need to know. I have a full house here with me and on this program to discuss this issue today, Azubi K. Okorunji, he's a development analyst. Good to have you here, sir. Thank you. And also um, Bada Liman, he's also a development analyst. Good to have you here as well. Thank you. Let me begin with you, Azubi K. Um, uh, before you came on this program, over time we've talked about this Paris um, London uh, loan refund. But finally, uh, it has been released to the state um, governments, the second tranche. And of course, um, from what the federal government is saying, it's not the final, it's just the second. And of course, um, giving them 25% instruction, the money should be used for the uh, of certain the salaries they owe, state governments are owing their workers. But look, how do you want to look at this release of the second trend? Bear in mind that we've had the first one released before now. Uh, well, um, thank you for having me, Neka. Um, actually, the funds that were released, uh, I think um, the president entered into an agreement with um, all the state government, all the state governors, uh, that 75% at least of the funds should be using of certain uh, salaries, pensions, and areas owed by the various states. Um, and I think uh, the Paris Club, or as they will call it, the London Paris Club uh, yeah. refunds, uh, it's actually within uh, 1995 to 2005, not 2002, as you earlier stated. Um, yeah. In my own thinking, I think um, the first tranche that was released, I think it was about 513 billion naira. Yeah. So if you look at the second tranche that is being or that was just released some days back, uh, it actually means um, um, you know a smaller amount was actually released to them, less than 50 percent of what they got. Now, the question here is this. The first tranche that was given to them, 
was it utilized properly? The answer is no. Because most, if not all the states, are still owing debts to workers uh, across uh, the various states. Uh, with a few exceptions of some states, of course. Uh, Lagos and um, Beavers are not owing work and salary. But you know, in various categorizations, if you now break them down, you see mm -hmm. that almost all the states are still owing. Because uh, some weeks back, some um, primary school teachers, even in Lagos State, were protesting that they are still being owed backlog of salaries yeah. by uh, the same state government. Now, my worry there is the first tranche that was released, you and I, we witnessed um, uh, what, for me, I would like to call a film show that characterized the first tranche, which is simply that most of the funds were misappropriated. Allegedly, EFCC is on the trail of some governors, and I wonder why even the first tranche, when it was released, you know, we had cases of it being paid into the account of uh, the NGF from where certain deductions illegally we are made, yeah. you know, and that is my worry. Now, if 513.26 uh, billion was the first tranche that was released, and right now they are giving them 243 point something billion, that's about 49% of what they got the first time. Mm. Was it actually utilized? No, it wasn't fully or properly being Are released. Are you saying it shouldn't be released to them the second time? No, of course, time. it's their money. <laughs> all those are all their monies, you know. Uh, they were being over deducted, you know, when Obasanjo entered yeah. into the debt relief and all that, you know, and it was agreed that, okay, uh, some amount of monies will be released. And this actually done in, uh, in good light, but my worry is still the use of it. Or the All right. of the funds. And that's why we're on this program today. Let me let me also have you make a reaction to release. Uh, um, some have said this money should not have been given, released after the budget, that the state government should have been allowed to draft their budget. You know, they should be told, for instance, Kadnasa should be told, you, 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 you own, for example, six billion naira instance now. So go in your budget and, and, and make, include in your budget what you want to do with that money before these monies have been released. I don't know. Are you also of that school of thoughts? No, I'm not doesn't really matter because they're, they're, you can do supplementary budget, so that's really not an issue. I mean, my, my issue, I mean, with, with, with these funds is the fact that there were five criteria that were set before these funds were supposed to be released the first time. We have no idea whether any of those criteria were met. Were met? Yes, because we just, I mean, and I, I would assume that we were going to make this kind of release. Initially, you would actually make sure these criteria were met before you release the funds. Mm -hmm. After you release them, I and mean, we try and see whether these people are actually meeting this criteria. Yeah. And so, most of them I don't think they have, but I think. Unfortunately, I think it's, it's, a, it's a subtle agreement between the federal government and the state government to try and reduce tensions, especially in areas of salary salaries and so on. We only have a state like Kogi that has been verifying salaries for the last 18 months. Mm. What did they do with the first tranche? That's the first question you ask. And if they haven't, if they didn't pay salaries, that the salaries of workers with that first tranche, why, why do you have to give them a second tranche? You know, but a more, a more critical issue. So are you saying they shouldn't have gotten the second tranche just like Kogi states? Yes, if they haven't paid salaries with the first tranche. But but the key here, and I think this very fundamental thing when we're talking about federalism is the fact that the federal government has no power to tell them what to do. That's really the bottom line. Because it's their money. It's their money. So you can use moral suasion to say, okay, we think that because of the crisis you have, we think that you should use some of this money to pay. But you can't force them. And like you rightly said, the role of the state legislature, which is sometimes here we're going to get to yeah. the is the fact that they are the ones that will, that will monitor some of these things and use relevant laws to try and ensure that these monies are used the way they should. Yeah, but the government, the federal government has no right to tell them because if, like they say, because I, st I personally have my doubts about the refund, but that's a different issue. Okay. But if they, if they were actually refunds, then what the federal government would do is, if they are actually legal deductions between 1995 and 2005 and 2002, then the government must just give them the money. Then they will now, at their state assembly level, appropriate these funds accordingly. And that's what Nasir Shai said he was going to do when the first tranche was going to be going to come up with a new supplementary budget to try and take care of the expenditure related to that. Yeah. We, we haven't heard that happen in any other state. The United States is the only one that actually said that. Sure. Because my public do. Said it, but how? Uh, how? how we don't know whether he's done it. Mm. But at least he said it, so I mean, that shows intent. But we don't know whether any other state has done that. Because you really can't spend this money unless you're prepared for it. And that's the only way that the state legislatures, which unfortunately are not strong enough to try and monitor their state governments. 
So that's where the problem is, you know. All right. So that's where we are, where we are now. All right. Uh, bringing back Okorinji, when I did mention that people have been calling for um, uh, th this money to be kept until we have a budget to include this money, he felt it wasn't necessary where we there would need a, a supplementary budget. But the question is, if the federal government cannot dictate or order the state's gov uh, governors on what to do with this money, can't also wait and say, okay, let's have you make budgets. Instead of just saying, you 75% of this money to clear your uh, salary uh, backlog, and yet at the end of the day, we had stories where hotels were built, where, you know, what have you. you know, can't this be said to be a kind of a, a way to is to be able to track these governors because if you have a budget we can even, even to able to track okay you said you're going to use 10 billion for this please where you know i don't know what what to take on that exactly um just like what my colleague said um criteria or certain conditions were attached to those funds and uh, to the best of my knowledge they were not met and um if you ask me, you know, uh, something needs to give. And the state governors, and then you also said something about the state houses of assembly being weak, and I think I concur. No, we're coming to that, because we're going to look now, at the rule. if you ask my take, should the funds be released? Yes, they ought to be released, because those monies actually belong to the various states. Now, what they do with the monies one of the conditions that we're giving to them is that they should make their budget public. Okay. I think only about five states out of the 36 has complied with that. Kaduna is one of them. Okay. And, um, you know, just so, so, so when you look at the number out of 36, only five has done that. It means there is something fishy. These state governors, they all know what they are doing. And uh, I think NLC you know, organized labor, let me just use the word organized labor. They've been going around the nation sensitizing people and calling for, you know, everybody to hold these government governors to account. You know, as yeah. per the refunds yeah, that have been uh, you know released to the states to ensure that the right things are being done. First and foremost should be, you know, at least I mean read the sufferings that the Nigerian workers are going through right now mm. because one of the conditions is that seventy five percent of these monies should actually go into paying of salaries, salaries arrears, yes, and yeah. pensions, and what have you. But that has not been done. So I think that's my worry there. We should actually have a mechanism, and it all comes down to one thing, the structure. The structure, which uh, I think is something we'll subsequently look at. Okay. okay. Yeah. Because Wait. the structure is weak. It's weak. The system we practice is weak. When back to you, you said you, you you have reservations about the refund. The refund. What's what are your fears? Are you are you saying uh, because a, a lot of people have their own interpretation to this whole refund? No, I, I think I think the refund in the, in the first instance, the way it should have worked, and um, is that they must have the, the debt manual office apparently is, the, is an organ of government that is reconciling the figures to ensure that each state gets what is over deducted. But the problem is, some states will if. It's true that some states were deducted, but some states were under deducted, and that's where the problem is. Mm. Some states, when you look at the debt figures from that period, some states had debts much more and above. The way the, the way it worked, the repayment, there was excess good, excess good funds mm. that Obasanjo used to pay off this debt. Mm -hmm. Now, what the states argued then was that some of us have a lot of money in the excess group who have very little debt. So if you go by traditional account allocation, you tell us exactly how much we have in excess food, tell us what our debt is, net it up, and then give us our balance. Those that have more debt than they have balances in the excess food accounts will now owe the rest of the states if they cannot pay. Okay. That's the way it was supposed to work. Obviously, they looked for a political solution in that yeah. said that let's not do that. Let's just pay this off and get it over out of it. So now that it's been revisited again, it's kind of funny that when we agreed then on the state government, because government is a is a green concern. Mm. If the state government has agreed then that this is the way we did. Why are the states now asking for a refund? And why don't they come out and tell us exactly what each state owed, what each state was over deducted, and then we know for sure this is actually going to be right Because now SCT has been regular example, SCT has been included in this latest draft. Yeah. yeah SCT gets its money yeah. from the federation from the federal government's okay. allocation. So how on earth are uh, 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 big man getting a refund? Allocation. So how do you get a refund? refund? That's the question I wish you were asking. <laughs> All right, I'm um, to be a balance. <laughs> All right, but uh, are we not saying we have an, uh, is it the, the problem of accountability here or that we don't have straight records here or it's just the federal government is just not being 
too uh, too straightforward when it comes to issues amount of money. Okay, I've been told we need to go on a very quick break. Sorry, let's take a short break. We will be right back. Please do stay with us. Democracy in oh. practice interactive, giving the people their constitutional right and liberty to have their voices in politics and democracy and good governance in Nigeria. <laughs> Hey, I am Danny Sucre, and there's an essence to staying glued to your TV because Liberty TV offers much more than you have ever seen. Are you looking for the latest updates on news, entertainment, education, information, enlightenment, business, and lots more? Just name it because Liberty TV got it. Liberty TV is strategically broadcasting from Kaduna State to a global audience founded on the tenets of free speech, human and civil rights. You can catch us live on Star Times Decoder Channel 180 or Strong HD, better still, Multi TV. For online views and information, feel free to check up the website. It's www.libertytvradio.com. It's more fun in Liberty. Liberty, this is Liberty. Liberty TV, voice for all, vision for all. to have their voices in politics and democracy and good governance in Nigeria. Welcome back from that break. I'm also looking at uh, the release of the second tranche of the Paris London refund. Of course, we are looking at how what next? How do we get our state government to make the judicial use of this money? So today on this program, an agenda was set for the state government. Let me come back to you. Uh, my guests, uh, of course, they are still here with me, Full House. Let's look at how do we get our state government accountable for these monies? Because even the last time, a lot of Nigerians don't even know uh, that uh, these monies were released and they don't even know what these monies are meant for. You know, for, for them, it's just a budget. But now that we have the second, the second trend, what should we expect in now? Uh, from our previous state governments? Well, I think one of the uh, things the federal government did, uh, like you rightly said, is uh, for this second tranche, um, um, the releases made to all the states have been uploaded yeah. and have now made public. The Unlike figures. The, the figures, yeah. yes, of course. Those are the figures and the amounts mm. credited back to each uh, state's uh, government. That means uh, on the part of the federal government, they've like, carried out a sensitization, you know, or that like, they are creating an awareness. It's not left for people like me and you uh, through all the organs and channels uh, that is available to us through campaigns and, uh, you know, holding them to account. Um, I would not subscribe to going through, uh, going, we, uh, anybody going through the House of Assembly because as far as I'm concerned, they're just rubber stamps. And like, uh, what is their role if you're saying don't go through... In, in terms of holding the government to account, you can't hold them to account through the various uh, state houses of assembly. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. Because as far as I'm concerned, they only do the bidding of the chief executive officer of the state, 
which is in this instance, is a governor. So what are they going to do? But the only thing that I think that me and you as citizens should do is, you know, we go out there. Like for me, I started a social media campaign yesterday, uh, you know, for my state. I won't say against my state. I'm from Imo State and 7 billion was released. And I want to know what they are doing with such funds. And uh, if you also go on, you know, other platforms like Budget Aid and the rest of them, they will tell you specifically. You know, by so doing, at least these governors know that they are being held to account. All right. Do you want to toe his line when he's he's totally putting aside putting aside our state lawmakers and saying um they, they, they really cannot do much here? Can you come and tell us what they can do, or uh, are you are you also discovered that put them out? Let's just I'm, fight I'm, our I'm, battle. I'm, 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 I'm very much on the side. I mean, they, they, they're just rubber stamps to the state government. So but what are the rules? What do we expect rules, from their them? Their role is supposed to create laws. They have laws that exist. Mm. And I mean, the appropriation bill is one of such laws that will ensure that these monies are used judiciously. They will do oversights, carry out oversights. Carry out oversight. Make sure that these funds are used as they're supposed to. But they haven't done any of that. In fact, what they could have done is when the money first tranche was released, said, look, there's just five criteria. As the state government, have you met them? Before you meet them, then you have to send us a bill saying that this is the amount you got. This is how you want to spend it, and these the criteria the federal government has set down. Whether they have the right to do that or not, we've met it. But they didn't do any of that. I mean, it's been totally silent. The money was just gotten, and then it was just quiet. Nobody knows Very few Nigerians, like Nobody I said. Nobody knows what the money was used for. And the problem, I mean, what you have to understand is, apart from the two tranches, there's a $700 billion release as intervention funds during the same period. Yeah, yeah. So in the first tranche, they actually got 1.26 billion naira between themselves, the states. And now they're getting an, an extra 243 billion. 43. And what has happened? We don't know anything that's happened. We don't know. They're still owing workers. They're still owing workers. Yeah. So, I mean, these are the things the, the state assemblies, but because they're not independent, though, they refuse to be independent. So they really don't have much powers, and in the end, inevitably, they told they told the lines of what the what the government. They don't have much powers. Yeah, because they refuse to be independent. So they just told the lines. They don't understand their own rule in governance. Mm. They don't understand that they're the third arm of government at the state level, and they must they they have the powers to to check government and check their activities, but they don't do any of that. You know, I mean, is there any state that you've heard that has? Had a, a serious running with governor one. Exactly. I mean, we don't have that. So everybody, every it's self-interest and self-preservation. Each member wants to come back for the next second term. Second term. So he's looking at. He's, he, he keeps himself. calm. He keeps calm. And that's that's the tone of the, of the governor. governor. Even and when these monies are not being and put when to proper had use. The opportunity a few years ago to change the constitution to make sure that the state assemblies are independent and they get their funding direct from source. Yeah. yeah. To do that. Yeah. And now they're still under the armpit of the governors. And if they had been independent, made independent, then then they could tell they could say what they could do exactly what they're supposed to and not be afraid of the consequences. Now they are so afraid of the consequences. They don't do anything. Now. It, now, if okay, if we have uh, state assembly members that are, at, uh, that are robust stamps like you, you've tapped them, but what can Nigerians do aside going to uh, social media to, to to make the campaign? Um, can't we hold them accountable? So, okay, you are representing me, uh, our representative. Please, we have this this is on hard road, you know, and there's a money here. Ensure this is done because if if, if they are effective, we expect them to tell the governors, please, my board where I'm representing. This place has been is been bad for long. Can we have this done from this money? So, can't we now hold them responsible to also hold our government, uh, our governors, responsible to, to do the needful? Isn't that what democracy is all about? Well, like he said, you know, the issue here is that uh, this monies that were released should have been budgeted for. They were not budgeted for. As far as most of all, That's most of the governors are yes. concerned, these monies are just like security votes. Yes. They can do whatsoever that pleases them now you, you ask a question and that question comes to this shouldn't we hold the various members of the state yes. house of assembly accountable and i tell you yes we can now you see this awareness is beginning to build up and every nigerian is beginning to become you know become a participant in governance i'll give you an example how do we hold them account threats of recall as a certain senator, I wouldn't want mm. to mention his name. We all know him. Immediately, they wanted to recall him. They started showing up all the projects he has done. He started mobilizing resources to that same senatorial zone. Mm. And uh, for the love of God, I know of some people that were from his uh, uh, senatorial zone that said, you know, that told me on good account, this man hasn't done anything. But immediately, he had of the recall, the man started mobilizing resources. Projects came up from nowhere. Projects were done overnight. 
So which means those monies were kept somewhere. <laughs> now, isn't that our? Let me come back to you. Isn't that? Isn't we should hold them to account. Isn't that we Nigerians, you know? uh, the electorate, we don't know our powers. We don't know what we're supposed to do in democracy. Because he just said a threat to recall uh, Senator, and and of course he came into action. Is that we've been taking for granted? Because if these monies are for the state, it's our money. These are taxpayers' monies that were over deducted, and of course it's coming back to the state. They said we don't know what we're supposed to do on the democracy to get the right things done for us, and Nigerians not well enlightened, not well educated to do the need for as regards to issues like this. We're not. When it comes to politics, we're not. Most most Nigerians that that vote are not enlightened like you and I, maybe people on this panel. Most of the people that vote are, I mean, somebody once said to me that Nigerians are being ruled by poverty. We're to a point mm. where just at the tail end of an election, that's when these people come up and they, exactly. and they do exactly. Give you rights, give you to such a point that whatever they give you, whatever they say, you take it now. You, you're not thinking of what you need for the long term. You're thinking of what you need for the immediate term. And I think that's part of the problem. So most, I mean, the recall process is a very cumbersome process. It's good that it's happened because then Nigerians know that it's possible. But there's a problem with that, and I mean, I, I've gone, gone through how the process works, mm. and it's quite a cumbersome and difficult process. I don't know whether... Very expensive. Very expensive. I don't know whether to go through, but at least it shows an idea that there's a possibility. And so, but we need to be able to show the people that we vote for that, look, we need to, you need to be transparent. You need to think of us, not about yourself. If these monies come to you, you have to do social projects for people to alleviate poverty and things like that. If you don't do that, then there's a, there's a huge issue. There. People at the grassroots should feel this money, this impact feel, of this should, money. They should feel the impact of this money. You know, but, you know, the problem again is, I mean, we're in 2017 now. Yep. Elections are in a couple of years. Some governors might be smart enough and wait until next year, just before the campaigns, and start to spend these monies. And then they start to spend and just forget. We forget everything that happened the three years before. Yeah, I was... I was going to talk about elections and some like a lot of um, 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 calls have been made. For instance, Anambra in November will be going for an election. Should 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 a state like Anambra be giving be giving this money at this point in time when you know that um, Anambra is at, at heat of campaign? I don't know. How do we hold at the peak of campaign in two months time or, or, or more than that? Now election will be conducted in Anambra and you leave and you give this huge amount of money to a state where. Where at this point in time, you know the governor will not even be thinking of any projects. Should that kind of state be getting this release now, or should it not wait after the election and this money should be given to that state? Uh, perhaps what if this governor, if, if if the governor does not even emerge victorious after the election, what happens to the money? What accounts for it? The constitution says sovereignty belongs to the people, mm. and uh, the rule of government is uh, social welfare. A government should provide social welfare to its people. Now, um, whether election is coming up in two or three months' time in Anambra State is inconsequential. Mm. Those monies must be released. An agreement has been reached between the federal government and the various state governments. Remember, I said something that our problem basically is our structure. Now, if these monies were released and we had a very well defined structure in terms of how things should work, it, it would be immaterial whether this money is released. Now, I go back to the issue of uh, whether this money should be released to an Umbra state. Or any state or that any doesn't kick at election. It doesn't matter. An agreement has been reached. Now, the most important thing is the judicious use of these funds. For some states, I wouldn't want to call any states before I'm accused of prison. For some states that are smart, okay, how can you tell me that two or three states of the lots are not owing salaries. What are they doing differently from these other states? It means these guys are in panic mode. Remember the nation is currently, you know, witnessing recession and all that. Workers are workers are suffering, workers are going through a whole lot. I, I read a report of a certain man in Benin State. You know, he was forced to be selling granots. Just, you know, so that his family could make ends meet. And like he said, some of these governors you know you use the word smart for me it's not being smart some of them are actually very wicked when it comes to that it's at that peak of election that's when you see them they now release funds to the people and like he rightly said but the funds Nigerians are ruled by poverty is it for we the to forget. Is, is it about f uh, um, spraying the middle of that money or use the money to do something concrete for the state because during the election we expect to see the money being being, being sprayed on air you know everybody grabs the money and you nope. see it is it is quite sad that a nation that is as endowed as nigeria what we've been deliberating on now is simply one thing requiring expenditure paying salaries mm. yeah what about capital but, expenditure but that, that's my that point has not now. Been done. 
You understand? I mean, all these monies that were released to them, if you ask them, they will tell you, eh, okay, we need to pay salaries, pension, and arrears. Forgetting about capital, capital. Um, the capital expenditure side or components of, you know, the, the appropriation uh, law. Right. That's the problem. So it comes back to one thing, the structure. The structure is skewed. I mean, the 1999 Constitution and, you know, gives so much powers to the federal aid should be reviewed. Or we should, you know, go for that so-called restructuring. Okay. So that resources will be made available. Every state will actually be productive. Yes. This, this thing of we going back to Abuja every to month to get money should change. All right. A report came out yesterday, sorry, that I saw a report from World Bank. Now, Ethiopia has a GDP projection of 83 while a country like Nigeria, Nigeria, and what do they do in Ethiopia? Ethiopia is landlocked, for God's sake. Just, just okay, this is the lines. Yeah, go ahead, what sir. He go ahead. When you talked about um, constitution, the, the money was released mm. in, 19, in 2007, Obviously, they refused to release excess good monies to all the states yep. just because before the elections. He said no state would get that money. The next government will come and do that. Get that. So, I mean, it's, it's doable. It might be wrong and illegal, but I think we're still in a process where the country is still evolving as a democratic state. Mm. So some certain things, whether they're within the gamut of the law or not, and it depends on the on the, re the reason why it was done. Some things maybe we can let pass. And maybe, yeah. Also, we did that. Oh, okay. Time for election. election. We are in a recession. Yeah, no, we're talking about numbers. Uh, number state. Yeah. Okay, let's hot here. We can you can dial number zero is zero three zero nine five. 6375. I'll take these numbers again. There is 030 956375 or dial. There is 068 There is 068 Let's make the calls now. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Yes, welcome to this program. Okay, comrade, let's hear you, your questions or your reactions. Yes, actually, mm -hmm. this is a good one. They give them money to the state government. Mm -hmm. But some government actually have tried. Like my government in the state is not owing workers. Okay. Salary. Only the area of pension and gratuity that the government needs to clear the backlog. But what is worrying me is that the institution that's supposed to speak on behalf of the common man, that is the state legislator, yeah. becomes the most useless institution as far as Nigerian democracy is concerned. They are, they are not doing anything. So if if Nigerian citizens can rise up and remove their right from these people, it will be a good thing. But I want to ask uh, Bala uh, this question. Lehman, is, go ahead. Is, is this Paris club entitled only to, to, to state governors? Is, is the federal government not entitled to this Paris club? Because Government owing federal civil servant a lot of areas, promotion areas, salary areas. Okay, I know where you're going to. And 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 even the pension areas. Why is it that federal government is not clearing it on back road, but is insisting that state government should clear their on back road? All right. Then. They are going to bless our country. Okay. Thank you, Thank you so much. He's saying it's not just the state government owing, but what? Answer the question he truthfully said. Um, no, no, it's the federal government that was over deducting because mm. the federal government had the largest chunk of. Yeah. So what they just did was they just used everybody else's money. I think about fifty one percent. Yeah, it's off. Debt, you know, and that's that's where, and because one of the key issues and one of the contentions then was the local government didn't have any debt and their monies were used to pay off that debt. And why are they not getting any refunds? Mm -hmm. You know, because the free are really going straight to the states. So yeah. I'm broken it down to say each local government, this is what we took from excess school that was due to you and we used it to pay off the debt and now since we've done the calculations, let's give you back your money. Nobody seems to be saying that. All right, let's look at the some institutions we are expected to uh, get Nigerians aware. The, some have said, well, what is the N uh, NOA doing, the National Retreat Agency doing at a point in time like this? A lot of Nigerians don't even know what to do, apart from a lot of people like you say you're on social media to call for, uh, do, the, do the need for. Should the government not do more to let the people, federal government, let people know that this is your right? Get this government to get this money used for your sake? Um, National Orientation Agency, in fact, I am, I'm, I'm a bit perplexed that uh, they are not doing as much as they should. For example, I tell you of EFCC. If you're on uh, Twitter, you get to see EFCC every day. Like you rightly said, that is what 
is expected of you know an arm of agency that is as important as national orientation agency so can i hold here and pick this call i'm watching it coming so i'll just let them ask the question hello good evening we are connected good evening Okay, you have not turned on the volume of your TV set or radio. That's why we're having this um, delay in our conversation. Are you there? Hello, good evening. Yes, good evening, ma'am. Welcome. What is your name? Are you there? Hello. I can hear you. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Comfort. Comfort. Coming from where? Hello. Comfort, please reduce the volume of your TV or radio. That's why there's a delay in our conversation. That's why we cannot communicate properly. Please do that and do call back again. We're looking at the role of NOA and of course and what they should do for the nurses to, to know what to know their rights. Yeah, like I was saying, you know, uh, an agency like NOA should actually be live and very, very vibrant on all channels of social media. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and the rest of them. I mean just imagine that if um, NOA carries out a campaign of every day telling us what a particular state gets. You know, they do it for, you know, a period of, say, 30 days. And, you know, you enlighten the people, you tell the people. In it brings a look at, exactly, hmm. God bless you, Bala. You know, you tell the people. That's a way of inciting their own input hmm. into governance. I mean, governance will truly change. All right, let me pick this call and I'll come back to Mr. Balatsu. Okay, sorry, do call back again. Yes, he was saying if you have the NOA giving us the, uh, um, this, this awareness in our local dollars, so even the woman find a car in the village knows that uh, our governor has got a new money and this my road here needs to be tired. You know, but can you look at the scenario whereby this thing is being said, uh, this everybody in the state knows and I will have the one in the village calling for this money, the use the one in the city and everybody. How do you think this can be? Or is there any other way we can we can go about it to get our governors working for us? Like I said, uh, democracy is a work in progress in Nigeria, so maybe that's probably part of the problem because I don't think, even if they do know, I mean, it's very important for agencies like the National GD Agency to actually be able to disseminate information so that people know. Like I said, maybe if you do it in local languages, they hear it over the radio, they see leaflets, they know this is what has been done, this is what has been given. And governors might threaten and say it's a kind of blackmail, but it's the way we need to go. Mm -hmm. So people will know. That, that, that's a part of democracy. Part of, part of democracy. You know, but my fear is that we, we still haven't gotten to a point where we get the kind of collective action we can get at the world areas where they will demand these things from their governors, you know. They hardly see their members, you know, and when they do see them, in many instances, they try to solve their immediate problems rather than the longer term problems. Like that buying them over arrows, giving them uh, money for. I mean, your child, enough? girl, things like that. You know, mm. things that matter to them at that point. It's sad, but that is the way it is. So, we, our democracy is evolving, and it, it will get to a point, but we need to start now. And once we start now and start to build that kind of political education, then in a few years, two, three election cycles, we won't get this kind of things that we're getting now because then people will be held accountable completely for all the actions. All right, I wish I could pick more calls. Sorry, our time is up. I have had mass to go because our news comes up next. But thank you so much, my guests in the studios have been Azubike Okoroji, he is a development analyst and also Balaliman, a development analyst as well. Thank you both for being here today. Thank, thank you for, for having us. us. Okay, and that's the much we can discuss today. I hope you learned one or two things. I have learned as well, of course, if there's anything I'm going home with, it is that we should know our right to stand up and speak, especially now that we're aware that our state governors have gotten this release and let's, <laughs> let's hold them to do the needful. Of course, and my guess is that you can also do the recall process. Do not be scared of what is happening around. Just do it and of course it's democracy. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Nekel Luke. Up next on our station we will be the news at 6 p.m. So sit by to get my information from the TV. But from what I was saying, bye for now. Democracy in Practice Interactive, giving the people their constitutional right and liberty to have their voices in politics and democracy and good governance in Nigeria.